Hello, and welcome to York Region's Accessible Customer Service Training. My name is Michelle, and I'll be your guide for the next few minutes as we learn about the Customer Service Regulation under the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, and how we can provide exceptional customer service in the best possible way. In Ontario, there are approximately 1.5 million people with a disability, and that number grows when we factor in our aging baby boomer population, or even those with what we consider to have a temporary disability, like a broken leg or recovery issues associated with surgeries, illnesses, or chronic conditions. The reality is that on any given day in this province, a larger percentage of the population than we think is attempting to manage everyday activities with some measure of complexity, including trying to access our services. To respond to the growing need to make Ontario more accessible, the province enacted the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, or the AODA. It's a law aimed at making the province fully accessible by 2025. There are five sets of regulations in the law that are designed to ensure accessibility happens in key areas of service provision, these being customer service, information and communication, employment, transportation and built environment. This video focuses solely on the customer service regulation. More importantly, this video focuses on what you as an employee are expected to do in serving customers with a disability. To do this effectively, this video provides information on the various types of disabilities that you may encounter in your role as a regional employee. To do this effectively, this video provides information on the various types of disabilities that you might encounter in your role as a regional employee. The objective is not to teach you how to categorize our customers, but rather expose you to disabilities in a manner that helps you understand the disability and, better yet, understand how best to engage with the customer to meet their particular need and in a way that honors and respects the customer's independence and dignity. The aim here is integration across our community, providing equal opportunity to service. You will also see the types of assistive devices that some of our customers use. Those assistive devices can include service animals, canes, or walkers. You will also get instruction on what to do if your business is disrupted in any way that keeps our customers from accessing our services as they've come to expect. Disabilities come in many forms, sometimes obvious, sometimes not. According to the AODA, disability is defined as this. Any degree of physical disability, infirmity, malformation, or disfigurement that is caused by bodily injury, birth defect, or illness. A condition of mental impairment or developmental disability. A learning disability or a dysfunction in one or more of the processes involved in understanding or using symbols or spoken language a mental disorder, an injury or disability for which benefits were claimed or received under the insurance plan established under the Workplace Safety and Insurance Act enacted in 1997. Some of the more common disabilities include physical, hearing, vision, learning, mental health, developmental, or intellectual. Please understand we are not referring to impairment that comes from drug or alcohol use. Also, language barrier is not considered a disability. Serving customers with disabilities is actually very simple. It's the same way we serve customers without disabilities. All of our customers should be asked, how may I help you? And second to that, a follow-up question of how may I best help you? Our customers with disabilities have most likely been living and functioning with their disability for some time, and they are experts in advising on how you can help. Remember, Put the person first. Concentrate on meeting the customer's need, not on their disability. Hi, my name is Kirsten and I have a vision disability. Some people are under the impression that visually impaired or vision loss means that they're totally blind. But in reality, vision loss is actually a range some people will see objects or use their peripheral and in reality only one in ten are actually blind. And a couple of other myths. One, that because we have vision loss 
that we can't hear. All right, Kristen, here's the door. Have a nice day. Thank you very I'll see much. You soon. Take care. Bye bye. Or the opposite, that because we have vision loss, we have a heightened sense of hearing. Both of those myths are false. Hi, I'm Laura. I work for York Region. Can I help you? Oh, yes, Laura. Thank you very much. I'm Kirsten, and I'm here to... Um, attend a meeting in committee room B and it would be really helpful if you could just guide me there because it's a little late in here so sure um, can I show you how to do that please please tell okay me. Um, first of all uh, just ask me what side I want would like to be guided from which side can I guide you on what works best for me Laura is my left side so if you just come over to my left side and then just tap the bottom of my hand and then I will follow that up to your elbow and from that I can get the information I need for walking. The best thing that you can help me with is um, when we change positions, like if we move from, if we were outside and we moved from uh, grass to cement, that would be very, very helpful. Or if we move from the carpet to the bare, fours, bare floor is also okay. helpful. If we come to a narrow spot that both of us can't fit through, uh, if you just put your, put your elbow right back behind you, then I know to tuck in behind you and then we can both safely go through that narrow space. And when it, we're back, I just come back up with you. Um, for obvious reasons, if you give information like stairs up and stairs down. And we, when we get to the doorways, if, if you give information like uh, doorway uh, opens left, doorway opens right, swings out, swings, uh, swings in, all, all kind of information that makes the process smoother. Okay, great. So let's go. Laura, typically what I would also do is try to step, stay one, about half a step behind you. Okay. So I'm going to open the door to the left. Okay. Okay. We've entered the room. Okay. So if we're in the room now, if you could just take me to my chair and okay. give me information about uh, the chair as to whether it has any arms or whether it has, uh, which way it's facing. The table and chair is right here on your right hand side. Okay. Now, if you just uh, take my hand and put it at the back of the chair, okay. that'll help me orient myself to where that chair is and how I get into it. The chair doesn't have any sides. Perfect. And there is a woman sitting beside you. Her name is Trish. Oh, great. Thanks very much, Laura. You're welcome. I'll be sitting at the table behind you if you need anything, okay? Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Some people might be afraid that they'll make a mistake or insult us during this process, but remember, it is a process. And it's more important that you leave us our dignity and our independence. It's okay for us to refuse your assistance, but if we do need your assistance, we're the best ones to show you how to do it. The best way to provide customer service to a person with a visual disability is to first identify yourself as a staff member and ask how you can help. Speak directly to the customer, even if they are with a support person. Support persons are permitted to accompany the customer while they are accessing our service. If the service is of a confidential nature, consent from the customer is required before proceeding in delivering that particular service in the presence of the support person. Also note that assistive devices should be considered personal, an extension of the person. Never separate an individual from their assistive device unless absolutely necessary or unless you have asked first. Hello, my name is Andrea and this is my service dog Addison. I have a hearing disability. Addison and I were recently trained at the Lions Dog Guide School in Oakville. Come on, Addison, sit. Good girl. Good girl. Her vest or harness indicates she's a working dog. She has her identification. When her harness is on, that means she's at work and shouldn't be touched by others or distracted in any way for my safety and for her concentration. She's trained to alert me for certain sounds such as the phone ringing, the fire alarm, or to someone calling my name. 
What is it? Show me. What is it? Good girl. Good girl. Hello. Yes. Oh, thank you. I did come. Oh, good girl. Assisting someone with a hearing disability, it's not about talking louder or slower, which can distort your lips and make it difficult for me to lip read. A light tap or a wave is sufficient to get our attention. Andrea? Hi, how are you? Hi. Good to see you. Yeah. Did you want to sit down and have a Sure. Talk? Okay. Come on, Addy. Oh, good. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask if a person is a lip reader or whether they rely on residual hearing. A person who relies on residual hearing may have a preferred ear or side. I prefer to lip read, so I prefer to have people look at me face on and to have good lighting. Talk at a regular pace and volume. If the person doesn't understand you the first time, try to rephrase your words. It's really good to see you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Service animals are allowed anywhere in the building where the general public is permitted. One exception is food preparation areas. This means that service animals are allowed in the cafeteria but not behind the counter where food is prepared. If you're unsure if an animal is a service animal, it's okay to ask the owner for identification. It is our policy to allow people to use their own personal assistive devices to access our goods and services. A support person is also considered an assistive device and support persons are allowed to accompany the customer while they are accessing our service. Remember, support animals are allowed to access all service areas except where food is prepared. Best practices in dealing with the person with a hearing disability include a light tap or wave to get their attention and to speak at a regular volume and pace. And remember, ask how you can help. Hi, I'm JP. I have MS and that affects my mobility, balance, and my speech. There's no set formula to use when dealing with someone with a disability. I tend to get tired when standing in line for a long period of time and therefore might require a chair or my walking might be off balance which could appear as though I'm intoxicated and my speech might even slur when I'm tired. I don't expect people to act differently when dealing with me. However, I would appreciate some assistance if I feel I need it. Hi, my name is JP and I was wondering if there'd be anybody I could speak to about job opportunity. Good morning, sir, welcome. I'm sorry, there's going to be about a 10-15 minute wait, if you don't mind waiting. No problem. Uh, unfortunately, I can't stand and wait for that length of time. So I was wondering if there'd be another room I could sit and wait for my turn or another chair you'd have available for me. No problem, sir. I'll get you a chair and you can have a seat and I'll call you when it's your turn after the gentleman in the orange shirt. I don't expect people to act differently when dealing with me. However, I would appreciate some assistance if I feel I need it. Here you go, sir. There's a chair for you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Not all physical disabilities are obvious. For example, heart conditions. If a customer asks to sit rather than stand, do your best to accommodate. Customers are not asking for preferential treatment, just accommodation when necessary. My name is Diane and I have multiple sclerosis. It affects both my mobility and also my physical energy. Life for a person with a disability is very individualized and it affects each of us in very different ways. People don't truly understand the challenges until you or a family member or a friend experience or are in this position. Before my disability, life was very straightforward. If I wanted to go somewhere, I'd just go when I wanted to go and how I wanted to go. But when you acquire a disability, life puts you in a different place and not everyone adjusts well to that new place or that journey. You can do your part to make a difference. You can make it better, you can make it more accessible, 
you can make it kinder, and you can make it more considerate. Every consideration and every support that you can extend to a person is another important step forward. It does make a difference when we each help each other. It's the understanding that even a slight change or perspective or attitude can greatly assist someone with a disability. I see this elevator is out of service. Is there another elevator that I may use? Yes, there is. This one will be down for a couple of weeks, but if you'd like to go down the hall, there's another one available. If you need some help, I can help you. Oh, thanks very much. I'll be fine. I'll just go down this way. Thank okay. you for your help. You're welcome. Disruption in your business is a challenge for me, but disruption in services is a challenge for everyone, especially when you need that extra time to travel or to have assistance to access that service. But when services aren't available and you don't know where to go or how to get there, it's very difficult for people such as myself. We need to let our customers know about planned and unplanned service disruptions. Ways to communicate this include updated telephone messages and posted signs at the building location and on the internet. The posting should include the estimated duration of the disruption and alternative routes or methods to access the service. Be mindful of making accessible features inaccessible, such as piling items on a lowered accessible counter. This provides excellent customer service not only to our customers with disabilities, but to all of our customers. If a customer refuses your offer of assistance, respect their decision. Allow them their dignity and independence to decide for themselves what they need. Hi, my name is Donna and I have a mental illness. Usually when we think of people with disabilities, we don't think of mental illness as a disability. Usually we think of removing physical barriers so that we can include everybody in society. We think of things like steps and so we build a ramp or a doorway that's too narrow so we widen the doorway or we have mobility buses. And these are all great things to have, certainly. But for people who have a mental illness, there are also barriers in, our, in society towards full inclusion. And usually the barriers for people who have a mental illness are attitudinal. And that means that the attitude of people in society towards people who have a mental illness can prevent full inclusion. When I was very ill, I was in a constant state of agitation. And I had a very difficult time controlling my temper, especially when I was in situations where I was frustrated. And yet it's also important to know that other people who have a mental illness may not experience frustration and agitation the way I did. Everyone who has a mental illness experiences it very differently. But what's really important is to step back from the situation and consider, I wonder if something else might be going on, and I will approach in a, in a different way in order to help meet this person's need. Mental illness is referred to as an invisible disability, and that's because Sometimes it isn't obvious that the person has a disability. Instead, we just see behavior that we don't understand. Mental illness is a broad classification for many different disorders. The most common are depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. When I developed depression, my family, my friends, my coworkers, even after my diagnosis, even after we knew that I had a mental illness, didn't quite know how to respond to my behavior. And the behavior that people saw was that I was irritable and angry and frustrated. I was obsessive about detail. I was often um, very angry about people not following rules or not doing things correctly. And it was very difficult for people to know how to respond to me. Because usually, with depression, for example, we think of people as being sad and withdrawn, and that's not what I did. One of the challenges that I experienced and those around me experienced was that I had no insight into my own behavior. And it was very hard for me to have an understanding of how I contributed to my own agitation. And I, it was through therapy that I learned how to be better able to respond more appropriately to stress in my life, for example. As a society, we tend to 
incorrectly label people who have a mental illness as weak or violent or inept, unintelligent, is not worth our time. And yet one in five Canadians will experience a mental illness in their lifetime. So it is a very common illness. It affects families, it affects workplaces. In providing customer service, take the usual approach of asking how you can help. If you feel your customer is agitated or having a hard time understanding or participating in the conversation, it is okay to politely and sincerely acknowledge that they appear to be struggling. One suggestion is to offer the customer a few moments to themselves in a quieter area to gather their thoughts, or if on the phone, suggest that they take a few minutes and call you back. A person may be finding it difficult to concentrate. It is okay to repeat things a few times and bring the person back into the conversation and ask them to repeat back to you so you know they comprehend your message. As with all disabilities and all customers, the best practice when dealing with someone whom you think may have a mental health disability is to ask, how may I help you? And how may I best help you? Hi, I'm Linda Irvin of HR Services, Head of Corporate Learning and Organizational Development for York Region. Learning disabilities can affect how a person perceives, thinks, remembers, and learns new information. They can and do make learning new things challenging for a person, but they do not equate in any way to decrease mental capacity. In fact, many people with learning disabilities have average to above average intelligence, but they may be unaware that their inability to understand and comprehend is related to a defined learning disability. The issue is the manner in which they need to acquire and manipulate the information being given to them. In reality, every one of us has a preferred way of learning. It's called an individual learning style. But when these are paid attention to, the learning is more effective. Considered invisible disabilities, colleges, universities, and other academic institutions are taking these into consideration, and many have established student access centers to assist students with their educational needs. For example, it's not uncommon to provide alternative testing, such as oral exams, in place of the traditional written exams to accommodate certain students with learning disabilities. A variety of formats and media to assist with learning is critical. As you interact with your customers, bear in mind that some of them may have learning disabilities. Ask them how they prefer to receive or learn new information and provide it in a way that matches their preferences. They may want information verbally, in writing, through demonstration, or with opportunities to practice with your direction and guidance. Or they may just need more time or patience. We all have different ways in which we take in and learn information. The variety of potential learning disabilities and learning needs or styles in our customers requires us to provide service delivery options. Anticipating this and being prepared to offer customer service in a variety of ways is the key to success. Keep in mind that not all forms are easy to understand or fill out. Offer your assistance where necessary. Be respectful of the customer's need to absorb the information in a different way from which you are accustomed to providing that information. Again, ask how you can best help and the customer will let you know what, if any, accommodation is required. So there you have it. Accessible customer service is required by law and supported by our very own customers. Our obligation and commitment as an organization is to provide accessible, courteous, and on-time access to our services. Our customers with disabilities ask for no special treatment. They are only asking for the same time and consideration we give to our customers without a disability to approach our service delivery in a manner that honors and encourages the core principles of integration, equality, dignity, and independence. To do this, our organization has established policies, practices, and procedures for providing goods and services to people with disabilities. Our policy is to allow people to use their own personal devices to access our goods and services, and or to use any assistive devices services or methods provided by the organization to enable access to our goods and services. 
allow people with disabilities to be accompanied by their guide dog or service animal in those areas of our facilities that are open to the public. If the animal is excluded by law, use other measures to provide services in the event the animal is prohibited. We also allow people with disabilities who use a support person to bring that person with them while accessing goods or services in facilities open to the public or other third parties. Where admission fees are charged, provide notice ahead of time on what admission fees, if any, will be charged for a support person of a person with a disability. We will also provide notice when facilities or services that people with disabilities rely on to use our goods and services are temporarily disrupted. We will also train all staff, volunteer, contractors, and any other people who interact with the public or other third parties on our behalf on the components of the customer service regulation, including those involved in the development of our policies, practices, and procedures. It's also important to avoid placing the customer in the situation of having to disclose their disability. It is neither our role nor right to seek this information unless it relates directly to the service they are seeking. We also have an established feedback process that allows for proper complaint registration and resolution for all customers, including those with disabilities and accessibility issues and concerns. Customer service for people with disabilities is easy. Put the person first. Concentrate on meeting their required and expressed need, not their disability. Ask how you may help. Ask how you can best provide that help. Speak directly to your customer. If you don't understand, politely ask the customer to repeat their request. Listen to and engage with your customer in a way that is respectful of their personal dignity and independence. Serving customers with a disability is easy. Ask how you may help. Ask how you can best provide that help to them. Speak directly to the customer. If you don't understand, politely ask them to repeat their request. Listen and engage with your customer in a way that is respectful of their personal dignity and independence. Put the person first. Concentrate on meeting their required expressed need, not their disability. Customers are experts on their own needs and abilities and will let you know how you can best help. We know through research that our customers who have a disability are often unable to get what they need, a positive outcome in their transaction. This does not mean that the end result was not in their favor, but they were unable to complete their transaction. Times are changing, barriers are coming down, attitudes are changing. The reality remains that people with disabilities are less likely to complain for fear they may lose existing accommodation. The AODA customer service regulation provides for this aspect of accessibility. It demands that every organization ensure their customer feedback process includes accessibility complaints and compliments and takes into consideration the person's disability when responding to or communicating with them. Our policy is that we provide a feedback process on how we provide goods and services to people with disabilities and how we will respond to any feedback and take action on any complaints. Our feedback process is also readily available to the public through our internet site as well as brochures. It's okay for us to refuse your assistance, but if we do need your assistance, we're the best ones to show you how to do it. Good girl. I'm now more independent and have peace of mind knowing that Addison's here to alert me to sounds and to make me more aware of my surroundings. She's become an indispensable part of my life. We all have different ways in which we take in and learn new information. The variety of potential learning disabilities and learning needs or styles in our customers requires us to provide customer service delivery options. Anticipating and being prepared to offer customer service in a variety of ways is the key to success. Invisible disabilities may be harder to understand. And what we need to do as a society is change our attitude towards people who have a mental illness so that we can all live together in an inclusive and just society. It's the understanding that even a slight change in perspective or attitude can greatly assist someone with a disability. People with disabilities don't want to be singled out. We aren't looking for special treatment, but would appreciate help if needed.